Hello and welcome to this uh, lecture 4 of applied ergonomics. Uh, in the last two lectures, you have seen how uh, one can characterize a work system and what are the different components associated with work system. You have also tried to uh, sort of estimate numerically how you could define labor productivity or in general the labor productivity index of such a system and what is the importance of doing that for <coughs> benefiting the society at large. Uh, the basic thumb rule is that you are um, investing lesser and lesser and trying to get more and more output uh, towards a, a common goal which is the good of the society. So, today let us look at some of the basics which are related to how once uh, uh, this whole uh, task or this onus of uh, better optimized uh, work management is given to uh, a section of people, how what are the kind of methods that they can follow or are there any standards which are being set to do such classifications. So, I am going to today start this topic of uh, work study okay, and there are certain, it is a very scientific process laid by some of the very uh, pioneering researchers in that area like Frank. Frank uh, Gilbreth as well as Taylor, uh, who, who actually suggested a series of uh, uh, hypotheses, postulates, methods, uh, which would be used for uh, representation uh, in a very scientific manner, in a very short uh, manner, concise manner. And uh, typically for people to see at one glance and to be able to see what is there in a process, which can be changed. Okay. So, uh, the field of work study really cons concerns uh, this central question of how to improve uh, the productivity and it is a systematic examination of methods uh, of methods for carrying out uh, some of the activities. Act by activities, I mean the tasks, the uh, you know the, the, the division of the work into simpler tasks is what makes you visualize what is going on within a certain domain. Uh, of the whole production facility say or whole unit and if you can focus at that level where even individual motions related to operations which are being put on the assembly or which are put on the product uh, are analyzed to, to the minutest details that is where you could make a start point for doing productivity improvement. So, uh, the purpose of work study typically is a systematic examination of such uh, uh, let us say splitting down to the minutest details, the whole task uh, quantum which is available to uh, a, a work system. Uh, also, uh, it kind of improves the effective uses of all your resources. You know exactly what kind of manpower is needed for what kind of task or what kind of equipments are needed for handling what kind of task. And then of course, to set up standards of performance, uh, one needs to do these uh, studies in a very organized manner. So, it simplifies. In, in, a, in a nutshell, a job to reduce unnecessary or excess work and wasteful use of resources. Okay. So, this is very important. So, it simplifies a task which is already being carried out in a certain manner using some kind of resources, uh, so that the unnecessary component of it could be identified and uh, where excess work is being carried out for achieving of a non value added goal which may otherwise not be important for the product. So, identification of that is very important and then also it wastefully uses some of the resources which come up in order to produce. Okay. And then also uh, there is a there is a way to set up sort of standard time for performing uh, that job and there is a goal towards standardization of such job. So, that you know if the job is repetitive in nature and it is done for every product on every cycle, you should have a well defined standard within which the job must operate, the task must operate. Uh, so, that you know any deviation from that or any abnormal deviation from that uh, influences the way that uh, the whole uh, assembly line works for example, or even you know the product assembly works. So, work study is a technique typically which deals with the following problems. Okay, so, the first problem is how should a job be done? Okay, this is a very important aspect. I have already uh, given several examples earlier in automotive manufacturing process, where uh, the process starts let us say with a press shop, a weld shop, a paint shop and an assembly and several different stages and then there are engine assemblies, door sub assemblies, they are all coming together in order to produce the final vehicle. So, first question that is asked here in this work system, if you want to do uh, proper work study is that if we have characterized the minutest amount of jobs or tasks which are there 
in the whole assembly what uh, you know uh, should we do in terms of lying out laying out very clearly how should a job be performed okay now uh, this how should a job could address questions like what is being wasted right now in the current practice and what could be avoided so that the job becomes a proper job a uh, job which really contributes enough value okay so for doing that there are organized techniques called motion study and method study which are put in use and i'm going to come we revisit this problem in a more detailed manner in the following slides and then the other question which needs to be addressed which is the central theme of work study is that how much time a job should take for completion okay so how should a job be done and with what kind of time scales the job be done these are the two basic questions that are posed if we want to organize the task set into a very thorough work study means and here the goal is to perform the time study of all the jobs which have been identified standard jobs which have been identified which are isolated as the ones which are contributing value to a product and then do again measurement of the quantum of work which is involved in doing this time and try to optimize that how much work which goes into the actual value added product is useful and the remaining may be eliminated in that manner so in order to do that uh, there, there are several other aims of course that work study also addresses and some of them are uh, it simplifies or modifies the existing method of operations i had mentioned in great details yesterday about how um, <coughs> just by making the system a little more automatic by uh, making a carriage which carries a coolant gun along with a vehicle when we are filling the coolant in the uh, final line or final uh, assembly line of a product uh, you could actually avoid the uh, unsafe practice being carried by an operator where the operator does the job himself of filling while movement forward okay so uh, simplifying or modifying tasks have many more connotations than just productivity improvement one of them being bringing an overall safe and uh, jovial atmosphere for the worker to deliver or for the uh, for the work professional to deliver the work the quantum of the work in a very timely manner in a very happy state of mind you know the quality aspects of a product which comes uh, later down the line when the product is sold to a customer etc is really dependent on the mindset of the person who is making the product and somehow you have to create an environment as well administratively so that the people who are contributing to him, uh, the the whole work environment have a ownership you know associated with the product or the selling of the product and if that can happen only then you can get very good compliance to standards or very good uh, you know very less attitude issues which otherwise should not come into any production process and therefore simplifying and modifying methods of operations is sort of the first step to go ahead if we talk about work study it reduces the unnecessary or excess work i think i have emphasized this enough need not uh, spend more time on it and then it stops the wasteful uses of resources for example if supposing you know i was exemplifying yesterday about the assembly line and a practice that covers are being put on all four sides of the automotives for preventing the doors from getting dents during the assembly operation so the option that was suggested is that if the door sub assembly can be made separately by pulling out the doors at the painted body stage okay stage and then separately supplying on the final line where the doors are again assembled back this whole problem of using extra covers extra material uh, you know maintaining those things and then you know material movement related to those things and employing different manpower that could completely be eliminated so the advantage of wasteful uses of resources comes up when such kind of decisions need to be taken about doing something or maybe putting a slight amount of work more into the system uh, so that this whole business of uh, you know um, getting quality issues in the product later because of some follow up processes could be completely eliminated and at the behest of using lesser resources okay so contributes uh, to understand uh, or, or to to basically create a safe environment i think i have emphasized this enough it identifies the hazardous work and tries to <coughs> develop either safer methods or try to eliminate wherever possible and then of course work study also cuts down the time of performing a uh, a certain activity uh, and uh, helps to thus improve uh, the productivity so the objectives that work study would have typically is first to determine the best method okay of performing an operation and eliminate wastage so that production increases with lesser fatigue of the uh, operators 
So, if I look at again the automotive assembly, uh, you know one thing which comes to my mind uh, which has been done from time to time is how to avoid uh, putting workers in a very uncomfortable zone. So, the work study is also sort of used to determine uh, the standard time that a qualified worker should take to perform the operation uh, and that too when working at a normal pace. Now, between operators there are obviously going to be variations because some of the operators may operate more efficiently, some at less uh, efficiency. So, there has to be some mathematical factor which rates uh, the operator in a manner so that his deliverance or the way that he uh, sort of complies to a task is included in terms of being over efficient or less efficient. So, that aspect does come in work study. Uh, it also raises productivity of uh, the plant or the unit. Uh, by simple reorganization of the tasks. In some cases, if you change uh, the, the quantum of the task by just reorganizing the work centers. For example, as I told the uh, in the case of door sub assembly, we, what we are essentially doing is we are taking work out of the normal assembly line, which otherwise was done in hanging doors or uh, coming out of the vehicle and putting as a sub assembly somewhere. Okay. So, basically we are changing work centers and trying to redistribute the allocated work between the assembly line and this new assembly sub assembly line that we are incorporating and what is happening as a result of it is that things can be uh, more efficiently packaged okay, and at the behest of very less defects or problems or where a lot of other uh, offline time would be utilized for repairing those. Uh, in terms of pulling out components, trying to repair dents from interiors, so on and so forth, approaching the vehicle from the interior side, etcetera. So, that would kind of get avoided. Okay. So, it raises the productivity definitely by such reorganizations of between different work centers and it of course, sets the performance standards on which the effectiveness of the production planning and control depends. Because once uh, you have a very simplified uh, measurable basis of your individual small tasks which group together as that whole major task. Okay. So, you basically controlling everything down to the minuscule micro level I would say and then uh, the control is more efficacious uh, if such a control can be carried out administratively. So, that is in general the objectives of work study. So, in fact, if I wanted to look at the whole domain of work study, it can be classified into method study where we are talking about quanti uh, quantitating or laying out things as small tasks and the correct job methods to be used as such to describe those tasks. And then uh, this is associated with this big area of motion study, where each task is of course, associated with motions, motions of hands, motions of uh, limbs associated with the workers who are delivering. Let us say for example, you want to put uh, a window regulator inside the uh, let us say uh, front doors of an automotive assembly. So, obviously, uh, the question, the many questions come into picture. So, the regulator is being supplied from offline uh, to online with some kind of a roller conveyor and bins or carries ca carriages or racks. So, the operator has to go up to that rack, pick up that particular window regulator, pick up that fastener, pick up a gun which is otherwise carrying, then come back to the vehicle, move along with the vehicle, place the window regulator from you know within the uh, door. So, the door generally has an inner and outer part. So, the window regulator has to go from the skeletal structure of the inner part. So, that it goes and appends itself to the inner part and then you have to align the holes holes and then put the screws or the bolts. So, that the regulator can finally, be fastened by the gun. So, all this has to be broken down into small small tasks you know and then there is a standard way in which this accomplishment can be made of carrying out the whole activity at minimum. Uh, interference with minimum wastages and minimum operation time. So, that is considered to be the standard way of delivering that particular task. So, in a way in the whole assembly whatever you are doing these tasks have to be split up in the for in, in that manner in terms of motion sequences of the operators and there are very good organized techniques and I will like to uh, even uh, sort of give you a perspective of how historically this evolved where all the motions are classified as either wasteful motions or motions which will slow down or motions which are actually uh, productive motions which will add value. Okay. And so, with all these classification we could uh, try to do motion study and the goal obviously, is higher productivity. Similarly, work measurement can be done through time study techniques. Uh, typically, uh, the best technique that is used is filming, filming of a certain task or a certain process and this should not be done without with, with the worker keeping in knowledge or in the knowledge of the worker. So, he will not do his best performance. So, you do it on a very routine basis over a large span of time and then try to uh, calculate 
or try to split up this frame by frame and look at the different motion sequences, the operations that is being done in terms of times, time scales and then suggest uh, a sequence which will have minimum time scale. So, that is time study. So, all motion as well as time study the main idea is that through that we should be able to address this need for higher productivity of, of any system. So, historically if we look at uh, Ellie Whitney for the first time in uh, let us say uh, early part of the 18th century uh, suggested uh, the importance of interchangeability of parts during manufacture. I think I have raised this issue earlier in one of my lectures where we talk about uh, fasteners and how important it is to have fasteners of uniform shapes and sizes because if supposing there are many such fasteners with different lengths, different diameters, it is very difficult to manage uh, all the material in perspective of where it is used. So, if we can control to an extent, we can control as dictated by the design, the, pa the fastener should be interchangeable in nature. So, therefore, uh, the fasteners made for one set of products to get assembled should be exactly identical to the fasteners made by the other set. And in fact, during the design phase of the product, a designer should take into account all these. So, that the design evolves in that way. So, that interchangeability of parts should be promoted as much as possible. And that technique is also known as uh, organized design for manufacturing and assembly. I will come to that part, part probably later along the line. So, this uh, interchangeability part was suggested way back in 1765 followed by the first assembly line concept which was again formulated by Henry Ford. Uh, which was during the period 1863 to 1947. Again, uh, very good uh, principles of scientific management of work as well as time study proposed by Frederick Taylor and then later on again Frank and Lineal Gilbreth who proposed the motion study. So, these are some historical evolutions in time scales uh, saying how this process of work study evolved in a very organized manner today and so now you can actually uh, represent the work in a, in a manner so that at a glance you could really make the difference between useful and useless work and try to separate them by looking at the process. Let us talk about uh, uh, details of such studies. So, method study. So, this uh, basically uh, represents a systematic recording and critical examination of uh, ways of doing uh, work. Okay. And, uh, it should aim at continuous improvements of such uh, laying out or deciding of methods. So, it the basic purpose is that it simplifies the, the overall job, develops more economical method of doing it. There is something called a best method of doing a ta task and so the idea is if I can align all tasks in a manner so that they are carried out at their best methodology, that is the way that you can uh, have uh, the best productivity of uh, particular system uh, coming out. And the other is work measurement. So, it is the application of techniques uh, designed to establish the time for a qualified worker to carry out a task at a defined rate of uh, working. It determines how long it should uh, take to carry out the work. Uh, in fact, uh, time scales attached to the work is a very important aspect because um, the overall cycle time particularly in assembly lines and things related to uh, let us say even sub assembly lines are really related to that time component. The workstation which has the highest uh, <coughs> task time would be determinant of what is going to be the overall cycle time. So, that much time has to be at least given to that particular station for the whole task to be executed. And so, uh, that would be the minimum cycle time that can be there uh, off record uh, on, the, on record on, on this whole assembly or sub assembly uh, unit. Okay. So, uh, it is it's important that time scales be attached to work in that sense. So, what is the basic difference between motion and time study? So, uh, it is very simple. Uh, let us look at this example here, this schematic here. It talks about a man uh, whose head is visible in this uh, cartoon here with two hands and he basically has a span of motion of the hands, his left and right hand in a manner so that it shows up to what extent the left hand can reach, let us say up to this point. Uh, up to what is extent the right hand can reach and similarly it also shows about how uh, much or what extent the uh, the left hand can reach the right side so this is determined by something like this particular point and similarly the left hand on the right side determined by this point and therefore uh, there is a common area where both the hands can be uh, present which is represented by this shaded area okay so uh, 
it is a sort of a convenience inconvenience question you basically move both of your hands in both the directions and let us say you are basically in, in, in the workers position. So, as you know that you know there is a span up to which the two hands can go right and then your left hand can go up to certain span and similarly your right hand can go only up to certain span ok. It cannot go beyond that span. So, therefore, there is of course, a zone where both hands are present and this would be typically the zone where all the assembly sub assembly should be carried out. That is the whole idea behind such motion studies. So, I would like to incorporate something which is not out of reach of the hand either left or right of an operator while doing carrying or things related to orientation one hand could be used, but while doing an assembly where two hands are needed that should typically in that criss cross zone ok, where both the hands are accessible. Okay. So, this is how uh, we would like to do motion study. It is basically uh, designed to determine the best way to complete a repetitive job and this mind you uh, we are talking about a case it is not a one time deliverance, but many cycles of this has to be done for completing uh, what you call production on a particular line. Similarly, is the time study concept which measures how long it takes an average worker to complete a task at a normal pace. So, uh, some tools like stopwatches and even uh, some uh, video recording, uh, let us say computerization and interactive tools can be utilized for predicting how long it should typically take or how long it actually takes and try to uh, do some uh, time sequencing of the different uh, methods which have been formulated by motion study. So, that we can have a possible impossible uh, job classification. So, that is the basic difference between motion and time study. So, if we look at what are the advantages? So, obviously, both help uh, to manage uh, and determine how much is produced by the workers in a specific period of time. It makes uh, it easier to predict the work schedules and output. So, if I am uh, aware of what goes on down to almost the, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, minuscule uh, scale, uh, I, I would be very well equipped to have a thorough control down to that scale. Uh, in terms of even one independent task which gets carried out to perform the whole task. And so, the better splitting up is there of all these tasks in a uh, time scale or in a motion scale, the better it is for uh, the management and control of such tasks. Uh, of course, they are scientific methods which are designed by uh, two different people here for the same purpose. Okay. So, uh, the main goal or main purpose is how to affect this uh, term here productivity and how to reduce the unit cost and of course, both methods evaluate work and try to find out ways to improve it. So, for example, motion study improves methods, measures distances or how much you move to do a job and how much you get done over a period of time and time study on the other hand establishes standards, looks at average time it took an average worker to do a job so on so forth. So, I think uh, we are kind of aware of what these two concepts motion and time study do in work study. In the next lecture, we would try to um, have details about how they can be practically implemented on uh, as, uh, for estimating cycle times and some other important parametrics. So, as of now, thank you very much.